Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the uh, coffee vlog. Uh, I haven't done this in two years, but today uh, I'm bringing it back uh, with, with guests this time. Today we have Tristan, I'm going to say your surname wrong, I said it wrong. It was McKenna, isn't it? It's McKenna. McKenna. Yeah. McKenna. 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 Why did I say McKenna? That's too, that's it's too sounds, easy. It's like it sounds McKenna. like a scotch. McKenna. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, if people haven't seen this before, we're just, we're just going to speak about movies, games, computer game, g games, computer games. That was the same thing. Yep. Uh, they're, they're pretty much and, the same. Uh, yep, comics and uh, many other things. So, do you want to yeah, in sure. introduce you? So, I'm, I'm Tristan McKenna. <laughs> McKenna, not McKellen. Um, uh, but all my mates call me Trim. So, uh, for any of you who see me on the, uh, the comedy scene, yeah, people call me Trim. Because my actual full name's Tristan Valiant McKenna. And uh, if I think I introduce myself as, hello, I'm Tristan Valiant McKenna. <laughs> on the comedy scene, people would not want to watch me. So, Trim McKenna. It's unusual. People like it. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering why, because I see all that you're called. It's just Trim every... Yeah, all my mates call me is Trim. What, since you've been doing comedy, is what you've always no, been doing? No, it's, um, it's actually... Well, well it's, it's, it's sort of weird. Um, so, uh, I was always called Mac growing up. Uh, and even when I used to work in prison, which I'm sure we'll talk about at some point, <laughs> um, I was Mr. Mac in prison. Um, but uh, my friends just, you know, shortened their Tristan McKenna down to Trim. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I... I've always introduced myself as Trim, uh, and when I worked in prison, uh, it helped create a bit of a differentiation as well. So if I'm walking down the street and I heard Mr. Merck, I was like, shit, <laughs> I, I knew who I was going to be talking to. Whereas if it's Trim, I'm like, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So it, it creates that a little bit, and but, so starting comedy as well, I just thought, yeah, stick with Trim McKenna because it, it, it's it's it, it's less imposing than Tristan McKenna, which, which does sound a bit on the over posh side, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that sounds too posh. I don't even think that sounds Tristan posh. Tristan Valiant McKenna. I think if you put Valiant in yeah, there, yeah, like, oh, they, they yeah, hear that then. Yeah. And the tweed, I normally wear tweed. I mean, I'm, I'm on the day off today, so I'm in, I'm in my scruffs, but the tweed and everything, you know, I can look quite uh, a weird little creature on the stage. So, But yeah, so that's me. I think we I think we should, <laughs> because you said it now, I think we need to start on <laughs> prison. How, how did you... How did you work in a prison? How, how did that come oh, about? Oh gosh! Um, so uh, oh, all of it. You know, the, 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 the worry is that it always sounds a bit like humble bragging. So uh, so I was a really bookish, really studious, intelligent child. Very quiet, uh, very small. Uh, I, I didn't even hit six foot until I was twenty three. Um, I had a massive late growth spurt. Um, so I was a, I was a tiny weedy, pretty bullied kid. If I'm honest, uh, I, I never got bullied horribly. I always stood up for myself. I've always been a bit of a mouthy shit when, it, when, when the opportunity arose. <laughs> But uh, but I was quiet. I was studious. Um, studied hard. Went to uni. Did philosophy. Uh, did a masters. All that sort of stuff. Um, and as I started just getting older and coming out of my shell a bit more, I, I just started saying yes to things, uh, taking more risks, taking more opportunities, and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, uh, after my second degree, I did a degree in archaeology and I worked as an archaeologist abroad, which I won't go into. There's, there's, there's some dodgy stories there. They're not, <laughs> they're not bad, but they're uh, yeah, they're not what I want to talk about in this blog. But, um, but when I came back for, from doing a bit of archaeology and stuff like that, um, uh, I decided uh, I had like a gross point blank moment uh, when, he, when he's just before his, uh, his uh, um, what do they call it, prom, that's it, in gross point blank just before he has his prom, he has a moment doesn't he, and he thinks well fuck this, and he goes and joins the army, I had a similar moment, I decided I was either going to join the army or they were advertising at the time the prison service, because Again, Tristan Valiant McKenna, weedy little fucking you know double degree you know knobsack, you know going into into a prison environment. I thought they'd eat me alive. Um, uh, so yeah, so I gave it a go, um, and I uh, it was myself and a few of the friends who were like you know security guards and ex soldiers and stuff. Uh, went through the recruitment process, and I was the only one who got through. <laughs> it was like, what the hell? Um, so I started my career at High Down uh, in Surrey, uh, but I did Winchester, I did Wormwood Scrubs, and I did Pentonville as well. I was in the riot squad. I was a tornado. Um, I, was a, I was a hostage <laughs> negotiator. Um, so you've and done it all. I have. I really have. Um, uh, I loved it. Um, I absolutely loved it. Uh, it was an odd job. You you meet some creatures in there. You really do. But for the most part, like, the majority of people you meet in prison are actually pretty. They've got a story to tell. And yeah. I like people. I like stories. Um, and prison was great for that. You know, working in offices and stuff, which I now do for the record, but working in offices as isn't as exciting. It was fun. So prison, you, every day was so different. You, know, you never knew what you were going to encounter. You know, every day in, day out. And yeah, I just loved it and just fell into it. And it boosted my confidence. You know, it allowed me, or at least I hope, you know, I, I can talk to anyone now. And I'm, I'm quite a gregarious person. So, but you know, I, I, yeah, I just loved it. I just absolutely fell in love with it. Yeah. Gonna, uh, this is probably weird. What's, what's your favourite riot you've uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I have got a favourite riot uh, Ford Ford Open Prison Ford Open Prison I think it was 2010 slash 11 it was New Year's Eve 
so I'd been out, I'd been partying, uh, and I was hammered. Um, and about two, three o'clock in the morning, New Year's Eve, I get a phone call, uh, wakes me up, and I pick it up, and there's like a uh, tornado shout, got a riot situation, grab your gear, uh, Stu Wall, you know, a friend of mine's going to be picking you up in a minute. I was like, yeah, all right, all right. Half, you know, I was half cut still, but I was like, yeah, all right. Uh, where is it? And they went Ford. Well, Ford's an open prison, it's a cat de open. It doesn't even have fucking walls, I and mean, people can just walk in and out. So I was like, yeah, right. It was a cracking winder. Why would Ford be rioting? Put the phone down. The phone straight back. They went, we're not taking the piss. It's on fire. So, <laughs> sure enough. So, we're in the back of this van going from Winchester to Ford Prison. And, uh, and you see on the horizon look, look, the fucking flames. Excuse my language. Um, and, oh, I've never seen anything like it. But to be fair, they, they'd all... So, what happened? Just give a bit of background. They'd all gone out uh, unofficially to have a bit of a drink. It was a bit of a tradition at Ford. And as long as they're back by a certain time... The decent officers with good jail craft would sort of like, turn a blind eye, you know, they're not doing anything wrong. But obviously if they're caught and they're breathalyzed, uh, they can go back to closed conditions, which none of them want. Uh, but we, at this point, we, the prison service was in a bit of a decline because of government stuff, or we won't go into that. Um, and there was a new officer uh, uh, who was trying to make their mark. And uh, when they all came back from the pub, she, uh, she breathalyzed them all. And uh, obviously, they were all going to go back to cat-sea conditions, and they were pissed. So they, uh, so they all kicked off and ended up burning the place. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when we got there, we were all kitted up. Balaclava's the worst. You can go on Google and look at the photos of us. We're terrifying monsters and these bloody riot helmets and everything. Um, they're all on their knees with their hands on their heads going, don't hurt us, don't hurt us. And it's like, it's not really a riot, this. Yeah, yeah but if they start a fire, then they're like, no, that's, yeah. they've done the fire. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all they really did. Yeah, but, but that was probably my favourite riot in inverted commas. Uh, uh, but I've been in proper ones. Uh, Winchester, I won't go into the story. Winchester was a proper riot. Um, uh, B, we lost B Wing, and I, I had footprints on my chest at the end oh, of that God. one. Um, but it's all good fun. Uh, and, and the riot training itself, I mean, again, it's one of them experiences you just got to say yes to. You know, like, you want to do some riot training? I'm like, yes. <laughs> Of course I do, and they, they throw bricks at you and everything. They call it flak, and you, you know, you suddenly hear cries of flak, flak, and there's bloody house bricks coming at you, <laughs> bouncing off your helmet. And everything. Are they just smashing those out of the walls then? Just the house. Some of them are, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they, they, I mean, they trash their cells. I mean, yeah. hilariously, like uh, they, they always complain about how cold prison is in the winter, but they all smash their windows out so oh. they can swing lines, so they can pass yeah, drugs yeah. and mobile phones and stuff to each yeah. other. So it's their own fault that it's freezing because they've kicked out all yeah, the windows. Yeah. But oh, they're in such bad state of repairs. I can I, I, I you know I, I've met some really decent guys in prison, so I'm not going to like slay prisoners and stuff like that. They do what they got to do in there, and it is tough. And the conditions are appalling, frankly. Uh, somewhere like Wormwood Scrubs, which is a yeah, Victorian yeah. prison, you know, it, you, at working night shift, you'd go around with your torch and look, you'd see like the cockroaches parted, oh, like God. the Red Sea in the Bible. You know, it's yeah. shocking. So these lads have got some pretty tough conditions to put up with. And people, yeah, yeah. you read, I, I'm no, you know, I've worked in prison. I was eight years in prison, and I'm no bleeding heart liberal when it comes to prisoners. You know. But at the same time, and you, you're reading, you know, Edith from Tunbridge Wells going, they shouldn't have tellies and they shouldn't have this. It's like, yeah, spend a night. Come yeah. spend a night and see what it's like. Uh, I, think, <laughs> I think the only time people were really saying that is just like on the, um, with the whole telly thing is where that guy, the, is it James Bill? The, yeah, I know who you were yeah, the, yeah, the child killer when yeah. he had guitar lessons. I think that's the yeah. only time you can really be like, yeah, shouldn't, yeah. shouldn't be giving them guitar yeah, lessons. No, but there's right. people that are in there that, yeah, haven't done as well, bad as people think. Exactly, and even the ones who have, even even your murderers and stuff like yeah. that. You know, if they're you know these are dangerous bad, bad people, there's no getting away from it. Um, and if they're sat in a cell, you know, twenty two hours a day with their mind ticking over the way their minds tick over without a telly, that means they're planning to kill me. So if we work in a prison, if you do, you watch any like TV shows on prisons and films? I did. Is do it, they? Are they the same or...? Some are, some are, some aren't. Um, uh, a lot of them overdo the violence. Prison's 99% boring, to be fair. Yeah, like, yeah. I played a lot of pool in prison. <laughs> I got quite good at pool in prison. Uh, I got sh I was terrible at table tennis. I never got good at that. But uh, but it, it's... I always describe it. I use TV. I, I love TV. I love pop culture. Um, I always describe British prisons in particular as being a cross between porridge and the first episode of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's a very, very odd, very odd mix. But. Yeah, it, it really, sometimes it is hilarious and they're all up to see things and then you you can walk into a cell and find somebody who's quite literally had the right pop. Yeah, yeah. So I think the last sort of violent present film that I saw that was a British one was um, Startup. Startup. Yeah, that's yeah. the last one. Startup was pretty accurate. Uh, so even their, um, so what we call CNR, so the, the scrapping. 
uh, in prison and uh, th th there's a big scene where he, he first gets what we call bent up and I think they even refer to it as you know, getting bent up so all the yeah. lingos right and everything um, and you see a proper three man team take down a guy properly And but again the way the cameras are and everything it looks like it's brutal you know, one man yeah. but no it's, it, but, but actually the CNR the control and restraint they were using was pretty accurate actually okay. so, yeah. so Starred Up uh, it, it, that was one I was going to mention in a moment Starred Up <laughs> Starred Up's probably the most accurate one I've seen uh, but again because yeah, well, these stories are stories, they they, they over glamorise it a little bit, and obviously the screws come across as you know big bully sort of men. Whereas I mean, look at the state of me. You know, I was a screw for eight years. I was a good one as well. I did some of the top prisons. Yeah, you know, it, it isn't filled with skinhead, you know, ex squaddies. You know, you, you've got a range of people working as officers in prison. Um, but yeah, start up pretty accurate actually. Yeah. I think I think we're going to speaking about uh, how do you get into comedy? How do you? Um, okay, uh, it's a so little, I did yeah. a really weird segue there. Yeah, but, yeah, really weird. Uh, I liked it. I liked it. Um, I, I can I can sort of tie it a little bit. So um, uh, so the reason I left prison and the reason I got into comedy, uh, I connected. So I left prison because I uh, I was involved in a small incident. It was a minor incident. Nothing that you'd even think it was that particularly that important. Um, uh, a paranoid prisoner. He was actually a pretty nice guy, but you know there was nothing. You know he was a mental health issue. Uh, got angry with me one day and spat at me. It was something as simple as that. Now, I'd been stabbed, punched, punched set on fire, the whole fucking works. Mm -hmm. But being spat at almost killed me. Uh, he had just a cold virus, it infected my optic nerve, got into my brain, and I got encephalitis. Uh, I ended up having three strokes, I was in a coma, I've now got MS because of it, blah. So all of that all happened, and then 2016 I was retired, medically retired. So I'm actually a pensioner, um, and I was medically retired from the prison service. Uh, and it was a huge hit. So you know, I was quite a big guy, a quite a strong guy, um, and suddenly my whole life just got flipped. Um, but I'm, I'm quite a positive person and stuff like that. So I went out there and I started forging a new career and I would work for the NHS and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but still, uh, you get depression, and uh, I was also suffering from a thing which I'm now aware of called emotional lability, which is like depression. It's a bit like bipolar, but it's completely physiological as opposed to psychological. It's caused okay. by swellings. Um, so I was going through a, a particular, so last Christmas, Christmas just gone, so virtually a year ago, I was going through a particularly bad spell of emotional lability, and I'll talk about it openly because it needs to be talked about openly, I was quite suicidal. Uh, my auntie uh, had just passed away as well, who I was quite close to. Uh, and it all just started closing in. Um, and I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. Uh, I was trying everything, trying all the techniques I, I've been trained over the years, CBT and stuff like that. None of it was really working. Sorry, it's taking a bit of a downward so it gets better. Um, and uh, just sitting on the sofa, miserable, and I tuned into the Rod Gilbert documentary and about how Rod Gilbert battled his chronic shyness and depression and stuff like that through stand-up comedy. Um, now, even though I'm quite a gregarious person and, 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 and talk a lot, I, I, I am also quite chronically shy at times. Yeah. Um, uh, I've forced myself to be this person, and once you do it long enough, it becomes you, you know what I mean? So it's not an act, it's not fake, but at the same time, I, I, there's nothing I like more than just sealing myself off, and, and, but I know it's not healthy for me. And that everything he said resonated. Everything he said resonated. I mean, he's been a favourite comedian of mine for a long time anyway, uh, but it, it did, really resonated. Um, and literally straight after that show, I booked onto the same course and everything. I booked onto Logan Murray's Standard Deliver course, oh, no. yeah, yeah. Uh, which is an amazing course, everyone. I mean, you really should look into it. Um, I did Logan Murray's course. Um, and yeah, I, uh, it was great. Uh, I, I loved it. I met some amazing people who have become very, very good friends of mine like on the uh, from the course, who I'm still friends with now, which I absolutely adore. Um, and it, it just changed everything for me like so march uh, when i so i was picked to headline the like the showcase as well which was a huge honor um and i did that and i've done a gig every week since uh, I, i'm, I'm yeah, completely yeah. addicted you know it, it, it's just such a great community and such a good feeling yeah no, that's, that's the thing i like i like about comedy i think if i hadn't have started doing it it would have been because that's because like i said it's like to you earlier when i started uh, two two and a half years ago and when I first started, I didn't really know, I didn't have many friends in London. Yeah. And while I've been doing it, I've got to know, I've made more friends while I've been doing comedy than I have in pretty much my whole life. That's I, the thing I, I love about the, yeah. the whole community of it. Totally agree with you. Right, I will, uh, <laughs> I'm good with these segues. We'll go on to, uh, what, what type of movie is it? Oh, are you into? oh, film, man. Film is... Because you've got, there's a hell, have you got a Hellraiser tattoo on your arm? Um, I don't. I, 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 
Uh, yeah, right. I thought it was Hellraiser. You, no, it's, uh, event, it's Event Horizon. Event Horizon. Okay, um, yeah, there's connections the to quite a lot of stuff. Um, so Hell, uh, Hellraiser stuff is coming. Uh, it's all planned out, uh, but it's also all secretly sort of hidden. Um, so I'm a huge. Um, I am actually a fan of the films. I will talk about it because it's a good thing to talk about. So I'm a huge comic collector and a huge comic fan. Um, my favourite comic character of all time is John Constantine. I think John Constantine, the Hellraiser, yeah, the yeah. Hellblazer, uh, is is utterly fantastic. Um, and I even like the Keanu Reeves film, even though it, it, it's it hasn't <laughs> dated well. But no, I remember when I first watched it, I didn't enjoy it that much. But then when I've watched it later on in time, you know, somehow there's a film that you maybe haven't liked that yeah. much, and I've gone back to it and been like, this isn't as bad as I once thought yeah. it was. It's odd, because it's nothing like fucking Hellblazer, either. <laughs> no, it really not isn't anything <laughs> like it. But there's something about it which I, I kind of like. Um, so, the, the this part, or sadly you guys can't see it as well, but like that, is actually the front cover off the constantly DVD, yeah, yeah. reaching up and crushing the glass thing, but changed into an angel with different demons. Um, then I've got Liberate, Tutome X, Inferis, and Event Horizon. That's also what he has on his two on his forearms. Yeah, yeah. I've got that there. And then there's other little bits and references. Um, so like the, 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 the essential deformed fetus up here is the Hellraiser connection um, from I think Hellraiser six. Oh, we'll, uh, um, so I've got like little connections. And like even the the Pentagon, uh, which actually isn't like a real black magic symbol, it says Abaddon, who's the Angel of the Abyss. That's actually based on my favourite series of books by Julian May um, and Mark Remillard, who's like the technically the villain but becomes the hero of the story he's called Abaddon the Angel of the Abyss so all these tattoos are actually references to pop culture things that I like but hidden um, so that people initially look at it and don't know what it is what would be your top top three films then oh, that's what gosh. that's what relatively easy but uh, for, so I'll, I'll list them and then you can pick which ones you want to talk about so my, my absolute favourite film of all time is Aliens I, I, uh, I love Alien we, we, we can discuss this at some length a, uh, that is, even yeah, even though they're my favourite, I know there are better ones. And bizarrely, even though I can when I discuss the Alien films, I know Alien is a great film, and I know it's probably better than Aliens. But I love Aliens. I think I, I do prefer Aliens. Oh, well, I, God, prefer it. Yeah. I prefer it more. That's always the argument. It's such a it's, good tight yeah, story. Yeah, them saying it's, but everything about it. Yeah. You have with if you look at Alien, that's more of the sort of it's slow burn but then as soon yeah. as the aliens on board then everything yeah just gets crazy but then yeah. with aliens it's oh, straight away it's brilliant oh, it's just, just everything it, it just it's almost ups a every, yeah, ups fiction everything. film it's a perfect action film strong female i mean i was eight when i first saw aliens uh, i have a lovely story i didn't have a great childhood which we won't go into but i uh, i remember my dad waking me up I, uh, realistically it was probably eight o'clock in the evening but i was tucked up in bed and he woke me up didn't wake my sister up which had a room at that point Brought, brought me downstairs. I remember my mum being quite angry on the sofa, going, like, "Oh, you shouldn't be watching this." And Dad was like, "You'll get it." Um, and he sat me down, uh, and I watched Aliens, and it's been my favourite film ever since. I, I love the special edition of it. I, I don't know why they cut the Sentry Droid scene because it, it's bloody brilliant. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's counting down and counting down, and they're still coming. I loved it. Um, oh, I adore it. I, I absolutely adore Aliens. Uh, so to, to this day, uh, when I bought my Blu-ray player, it was the first Blu-ray I bought as well. Uh, so I adore Aliens. Uh, Blade Runner, uh, a huge, huge uh, influence. I, I love Twenty Forty Nine as well. You like? Okay. Good, oh good. gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I love it. I, I recently, when I, 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 think, I don't know if you've seen before. I asked people what the worst movie they've ever seen, oh, and had an audience a while back yeah. say that was the worst movie. And I was thinking, no, oh, that's, no you, you, have, you haven't seen much if you think yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the worst. Oh, it's, yeah, there's, there's so much worse out there. The Twenty Forty Twenty Forty Nine is a great film. It's one. Uh, it's one that had to. I did like it when I thought the first time, but I think it's one that had to also grow on me. I, I That's had to always been the case with Blade Runner. That mm. had to grow on me, even though I liked it yeah. straight away from the first. But I had, I've always done multiple yeah, watches had, on it. Had to process it. Had yeah, to yeah. process the film. Um, totally worth it. I mean, I, I, I absolutely adore it. Uh, absolutely wonderful film. And then, uh, obviously, then picking a third one. Um, what I'm doing more is like student consciousness, almost like just what's popped into my head uh, and I know what it is and, and it's going to sound so cliche because I was a child of the 90s and I was a goth uh, <laughs> and it was one of the best soundtracks out there when I was growing up with The Crow I mean <laughs> Brandon Lee and The Crow I mean it's such a you know, I watch the film now and it's, it has dated horribly for the record it really has did you ever see any of the um, horrible sequels oh, I saw all of the horrible sequels <laughs> and the horrible TV show as well <laughs> yeah, they, they were meant to be doing they were meant to be remaking it, they and were. Bradley Cooper was in talks yeah. to be the main. Yeah. I remember reading. I can't remember detail. I remember because I read a lot of film stuff as it's been like oh, online and stuff, and I do remember they were talking about it. And they has thankfully slinked under the radar again. Um, I I can sit and admit that it wasn't a great film now and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. But um, for again, like, I was thirteen, fourteen when I saw The Crow. Um, 
uh, and the influence it's had on my life yeah. to this day. You know, it's you know got me into. You know, I didn't really know much about comic books at that point. I thought comic books were for nerds. You know, I read Buster and stuff growing up. Like I was a kid in the eighties, so I used to read Buster and Wizard and Chips, and I've still got these uh, comics at home <laughs> for the record. Um, so, but like the, the comic books with superheroes and stuff, they were for nerds. You know, and I wasn't a nerd at that point. I was thirteen or fourteen. I was becoming one. <laughs> Um, and, and yeah, I, I, I saw this film, loved it, loved the soundtrack, went and bought the soundtrack, discovered it was based on John O'Barr's uh, uh, awesome graphic novel, bought that, hated it. <laughs> it's like, what's this? This is nothing like the film. Yeah. He's over back from the dead. Uh, but I kept revisiting the comic book and then that sort of made me realise like, how beautiful comics are as a medium as well. But uh, but yeah, so it'd be my top three, I think. Now go on to segways again. <laughs> uh, do you play many computer games? Um, <laughs> my, my, so my <laughs> friends who will be watching this uh, will, will be pissing themselves at that question. Uh, yes and no. Um, <laughs> and this is, again, going to sound like humble bloody bragging, but again, for my friends out there who know me will know this is sadly true. I adore computer games. I think computer games are fantastic. Um, I've been into computers since I was a kid. We used to get hand-me-downs from, from relatives and stuff, so I, I've, been, I've played since the Master System and stuff like that. I remember Alex Kidd in Miracle World, and uh, uh, and I love all that old 8-bit stuff, and, and Abe's Odyssey still ranks yeah. as well, one of my favourite games of all time. Uh, the uh, the Blade Runner game, when that came out, over six discs of raster graphics. And yeah. God, what a game. What a game. Loved it. Half-Life, the original Half-Life. Did I love that Deus Ex? You know, I can list games uh, against forever. But however, over the years, and, and probably for the last sort of, uh, but my last games console was, was a, a, a original Xbox. Was when I actually say my last true games console, it was probably the GameCube, and that's when I started to stop. I started going off games, but not because they were getting bad, but because they were turning into something different, and they've become these hugely immersive experiences. And knowing the sort of person I am, I get hooked yeah uh, and I can live in those things um, so I've avoided them and I also do find games quite easy um, and I always have um, when I was ill and I came out of hospital this is genuinely true my friend Alex uh, to try and help get my hand-eye coordination back uh, gave me Portal 2 um, and uh, I put it on the hardest mode and was playing along and stuff and about six hours later he walked into the lounge and he actually said to me and he'll be watching this so he will know this is true he was like are you in my game I was like no and he was like but it's taken me weeks to get here <laughs> and I was like I found it so easy to see and work out um, so I find them quite easy Yeah. but uh, he recently came down with his PS4 and I had a go at Red Dead Redemption 2 and I was blown away I yeah, mean, you, no, you, you that's, can, what, that's what I'm playing at the moment. Oh, it's stunning. I mean, you can literally uh, two things actually. Uh, I'm going to tie a little two, uh, to a little thing. So I talk a lot. I've no, I know I do this. Um, so two things recently have come out where you could literally, in my opinion, pause it at any point in time, and you've just got a perfect image. And Red Dead Redemption Two. You, you, you wander around, close your eyes, on the on the thing, and then open your eyes and look where you are. Yeah, and it's just going to be beautiful. Um, and the same with Spider Man into the Spider Verse. <laughs> Pause that film anywhere you want. Yeah, to, and you're going to have a, a work of art. Frankly, no, that, in front of the new Spider Man for us. Yeah, oh, blown away by yeah, it. it um, so so yeah, so Red Dead Redemption Two, absolutely adore. Um, so uh, and I'm probably I'm going to wait till the January sales. Uh, I'm probably going to treat myself to a PS4 and just, yeah. just to play Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> the thing that I'm doing in Red Dead Redemption 2 at the moment is I'm not even doing missions. It probably sounds weird, but I'm just trying to discover all the animals yeah, yeah. in the world at the moment. I just wandered but, around. Yeah. I just wandered around. Well, I found out there's a there's a lot of um, animals that just hide as well. Okay. You can find them in trees. It's just <laughs> insane, the level of detail. But again, it all when my friend Alex was showing me the controls and he was like, yeah, if you want to draw, you've got to press that to draw your gun, do that to aim it and that to shoot it. I was like, this seems unnecessarily difficult for no reason. Yeah, yeah. To, no, no, it becomes instinctive before you even realise it, and it is that level of thought and detail. So you're not just going X fire picks your gun and fires it. You you, you have to think it yeah, through. Yeah, and you've got to, when if you have people coming towards you, and you've yeah. got to do the dead eye. You've got to think. Yeah. How many? What people in this yeah. order am I going to kill? Do I want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> is this something I want to commit to? Um, yeah, yeah, I loved it. And I suppose one thing we didn't, we haven't touched on, which we probably should touch on, is just comedy in general. Like, you know, what, what's I think no, so I asked you about. What, yeah, when you started and that. Oh, yeah, yeah. but, but what, sort of, what sort of comedians and stuff like influence you, Luke? Like, um, who, for me, it's. I don't know, Bo Burnham was one because mm -hmm. I just really liked his really stuff. Good, it was also. Yeah. Uh, Stuart Lee, which a lot of people speak about, but it's more sketch groups. Like, I really liked um, Big Train. Yeah. And I think it's um, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost always sort of. They influence just because of Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. Mm -hmm. and, 
Um, but yeah, those are the sort of Smack people that pony, yeah, yeah, yeah no, always good. influenced me because I just it's more sort of surreal stuff that I like to. Yeah, I, I again quite similar actually. We have similar taste. Um, so my favourite comedian is Barry Humphreys, who I've actually had the pleasure of meeting as well. Um, a lovely guy, Dame Edna Reveridge, uh, uh, where most people know the name. Um, it also narrated one of my favourite films, um, Sam and Max. Have you seen that? Uh, beautiful film, utterly, utterly beautiful clip, stop motion animation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Barry Humphreys is a, is a god to me. And uh, during the late 60s and early 70s, he was a very surreal comic, a dangerous comic, in fact. Um, and yeah, yeah, really, really good stuff. And I like, I love that kind of stuff. And I, I wish I could do that kind of comedy. And that is what I wanted to do. Um, as I thought he said at the start, the style of the comedy I want to do isn't what I've ended up doing. But yeah, no, I'm with you on that. I like all that kind yeah. of stuff. The the only one I now find uncomfortable to watch is Little Britain, sadly. Um, it's, yeah, it hasn't dated well. Not well you at look all. at it now and it's like, mm. how are they still doing blackface and that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not- but then you look at Little Brent, and then you go to Come Flow With Me, mm. and they're still doing blackface, and that, yeah. that was 2011, Yeah, and they're playing Asian characters as well, it's yeah. like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and don't get me, I mean, I, again, like, as, I, as I hinted earlier, I'm no bleeding heart liberal as such, I'm quite quite straight down the middle when it comes yeah. to these kind of things. And I don't, uh, I'm not going to sit here and slate it either, you know, at the time, what they were doing, it was actually good, and I was a fan, you know, I, I yeah, did yeah, enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, um, but God, it yeah. hasn't stood up. No, no. Um, and I think that, for me, when when I, I I like a lot of the older comedies and stuff like that, it, it's the ones that stand up, um, and stuff like as you said, Big Train, uh, anything by Chris Morris, yeah, uh, yeah. So all the jam stuff and, yeah. and stuff, all of it stands I was, up. I've, I've been going back and watching um, the Day to Day yeah. recently, and that oh, is just just brilliant, brilliant stuff. Yeah, utterly, utterly. Yeah, yeah. Four Lions as well. I, yeah, I brought, Four Lions uh, is, is great. I brought Four Lions into prisons. So I nights. <laughs> uh, we do night shifts on prisons. There, prison officers do a whole week of nights, and it'll be the same crew on. And I brought the uh, we, in Winchester. We sort of like you know you'd sit and watch some films and watch and do your patrols and stuff like that. And I brought four lines in. And start of the week, I said, "Oh, I brought this film in." They're like, "Oh, what's it about?" I was like, uh, "Some Muslim bombers and blah blah blah." blah. <laughs> and they were like, "Whoa, no, we're not watching that." And uh, sorry, prison <laughs> officer friends out there, but you are some of you are a bit right wing. Um, so they were like, "Oh, I'm not watching that. I'm not watching that." Uh, but uh, the the SO in charge of the night, who was a, a father figure to me, frankly, and if he is watching this, you really were, uh, John Watts, he was like, no, we've all had our choices, let, let Tristan put his film on. And we sat and watched Four Lions, and every single person in the room went out and bought it the next day. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's, it's something that you, yeah. you look at the subject matter and you think, this, this shouldn't mm, be funny. This shouldn't be funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then it is. Yeah. <laughs> It's such a good film. They all, they honestly did. They went out and bought it the next day. Uh, everyone in the room was like, what a film. Uh, so yeah, Chris Morris, thank you. Fa- thank you, Chris Morris. Is there anything you want to recommend to people they should go and, I go think and watch? De- definitely, uh, as mad as it sounds, if, if uh, uh, as we have discussed and you, as you've watched through this, you know, I'm not into superhero stuff much. I do enjoy the Marvel movies, but, uh, but my film of the year... Uh, Genuinely, is uh, into the spider verse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really, no. really shocked yeah, me. Because <laughs> I went sort of about two weeks ago, but yeah, as yeah. soon as I've seen it, I was like, this is perfect right from the start. Yeah. Because I love that it picks on all the other Spider Man films. Yeah. And right from the start, it's like, all right, let's do this one more time. And it's yeah. just because we've heard Peter Parker's story yeah, it's so many times. We, we're all bored of the origin story. We get it. Bit by radio spider, everyone knows. I uh, loved it. Uh, but the whole film, uh, just heartwarming. Perfectly scripted, perfectly executed. Uh, if you're not into superhero movies per se, but but enjoy the more intelligent sort of like Pixar sort of feel, sort of you know, yeah, because really it's well very... crafted stories. I was watching it. I was thinking to myself, it doesn't. F- Even though it's a PG, mm. at the same time, it doesn't feel. Like it's a kid's film in no, any way. It feels no. very adult yeah, for everything yeah. that it does. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I, I loved it. I, I really, really rated it. Um, it's a bad comparison, but, uh, but particularly if you enjoyed films like Big Hero 6. Uh, yeah, you, that's, you, I think that's, yeah. no, that, that works. Yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 you, yeah. You're going to love it. So if you haven't seen it, if you put off because you think, I don't want to watch a cartoon, I certainly don't want to watch a fucking another Spider Man movie, <laughs> you're wrong. Go and watch Angel of the Spider Verse. You're going to love it. TV wise, into the fucking world. If you haven't seen it, get yourself on Netflix. See that. Film-wise, we didn't talk about this film, but uh, uh, Roma currently has just hit Netflix as well. Okay. Have you seen Roma? It's no, no, I've heard, I've heard good things about it because I stand by 
Elf one as well. The guy up on the crown. Who did? Who yeah. Did, yeah. Who did? Um, Gravity. Yes. Yeah. It's it's beautiful and comic book wise, we both said about it. We both love it. Lock and Key. If you've not read yeah. Lock and Key, go and read Lock and Key. They're the recommendations you need to take away from this. Yes. Don't. Don't watch The Crow. It's dainty bad. <laughs> <laughs> don't ever watch Paul Blart Hole Cop. Oh, no. Don't ever watch Paul Blart. Oh, that is an... Or, the, uh, okay, then. Right. What is your least favourite film of all time? I think it has to be Paul Blart Hole Cop 2. Wow. I know I said the sequel. I didn't even know there was a sequel. Oh. I remember sitting in a cinema. It's that or Shark Exorcist. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a shark exorcist. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my ex uh, made me watch. Uh, so I made her watch a film called Burn After Reading, which I think is brilliant. Yeah, we watched it the other. Oh, the right. yeah. She um, hated it. I said that's the worst thing I've ever seen. So in revenge, in inverted commas, she made me watch a film I think called Night Walkers or something like that. That is the worst film I've ever seen. What was that? It was like an awful horror film, and it was sort of werewolfy, I think. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> oh, God, no. Oh, I hated it. But when people ask me directly what my least favourite film of all time is, Batman and Robin. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Batman and Robin is, is yeah. horrible. Yeah, it's bad, it's bad. But yeah, I'm glad we closed on that. Uh, yeah, it's going to be close. Closed, closed, closed on the worst ones. They're recommended. Ones to and so, yeah, ones to avoid. <laughs> That's always good. But uh, thank you for being on. Thank you very much for having me. You're on the 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 reboot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm very okay, so very glad vlog. to be here, and very but, um, nice coffee as well. Yeah. Tell your girlfriend she was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got I got the Nest Cafe, and I bought it home. My girlfriend said, "No, that's the crap coffee that everyone always says is bad." There's nothing wrong with Nest but, Cafe. Yeah. Maybe you just made it well. <laughs> water and yeah, water and milk, and that was it. But no, thank you, thank you for being on this. Uh, that's thank it, everyone. Right. Thank you for watching this, and. Uh, See you on the next one. <laughs> See you soon.